Hello and welcome you all. Dear students, this topic is optical isolators, then optical couplers and optical circulators. In this session, we will discuss the construction and principle of working of these optical uh, components. So first is optical isolator. As the name indicates, it provides isolation between source and detector. Suppose we are using a light laser as a light source, then there may be certain reflections from the destination, from the receiving end. If the reflected light, we know that reflected light is in the reverse direction, in the backward direction. If reflected light comes back to the laser source, comes back to the light source, it will cause the effect on the oscillations of the lasers. So to avoid this and optical isolator is placed between source and detector. Now this diagram shows the principle of working of optical isolator. This arrow is the arrow indicating incoming light. There is one term which is called SOP that is state of polarization. Actually this term polarization is related to the orientation of electric field vector. Make it simple. This is the incoming light. So we are using two polarizers, polarizer one and polarizer two. In between these two polarizers, one device is placed that is Faraday rotor, which produces a rotation of 45 degree. Now, let us talk about this part, vertical SOP. SOP stands for state of polarization. Suppose we have designed polarizer one in such a way that it will allow the light rays which are having only vertical polarization. This uh, this symbol shows the symbol of vertical polarization. So incoming light is having vertical polarization or it is vertically polarized light. Then polarizer one is designed to uh, allow or to pass only light having vertical polarization. Then this light is as shown here in this diagram. It is again having vertical polarization. When this light passes through Faraday rotor, it produces 45 degree rotation. So polarization is like this. It is having 45 degree rotation. Polarizer 2 is designed in such a way that it will allow the 45 degree rotation light rays. So this light ray will directly pass through polarizer 2, ideally without any attenuation. And uh, there is a transmission of light ray from source to the detector. Now, if there are any reflections from the detector, then reflected light ray will move in the backward direction shown by this arrow. This reflected light ray will be having 45 degree uh, polarization. Polarizer 2 will allow, will permit this light ray because polarizer 2 is designed to pass only light rays having 45 degree rotation. So this light ray will appear as it is. This Faraday rotor again produces 45 degree rotation. So total rotation becomes 45 plus 45 that is 90 degree. So it becomes horizontally polarized wave like this. So this gives us 90 degree SOP that is 90 degree uh, polarization. Polarizer one is allowing only light rays which are having vertical polarization. This is the horizontal polarization. So this light ray which is a reflected light ray will be blocked by polarizer one and it will not reach to the optical light source. At this end we are providing a light source and at the other end we are placing the detector. So this is the way how optical isolator works. Now there are two important parameters related to this. First is insertion loss. This is the loss taking place in the signal or in the light ray when it is traveling from source to detector that means in the forward direction. So ideally it should be zero. Typical value is around 1 dB. Second is isolation loss. It is the loss taking place in the reflected light ray reflected by the detector uh, and moving towards the light source. This loss must be very high. So it is around typical value is around 40 to 50 uh, decibels. The next is optical circulators. See, we have studied optical isolator. The function of isolator is to provide isolation between source and detector. Circulators are similar to the isolators. That means it is used to circulate the optical power from one port to the another port and indirectly it provides the isolation. The major difference between optical isolator and optical circulator is that in case of optical circulator, there are multiple ports, there are many ports. 
सो कॉमनली यूज ऑप्टिकल सर्क्युलेटर्स कैन बी थ्री पोर्ट ऑप्टिकल सर्क्युलेटर और फोर पोर्ट ऑप्टिकल सर्क्युलेटर इन दिस डायग्राम थ्री पोर्ट ऑप्टिकल सर्क्युलेटर इज शोन एज शोन बाय दिस रेड एरोज द ऑप्टिकल कपल सर्क्युलेटर्स अलाउ द ऑप्टिकल पॉवर टू फ्लो इन द गिवन डायरेक्शन ओनली वॉट डज दिस मेन इफ इंसिडेंट पॉवर इज एट पोर्ट वन दिस इज पोर्ट वन इट विल बी अलाउड टू पास इन दिस डिरेक्शन towards port 2 then if power is incoming from port 2 it will be allowed to flow to port 3 same way if power is incident at port 3 it will be allowed to flow towards port 1 only suppose there are back reflections there are reflections of the light from port 2 then naturally uh, the reflected light should move in the reverse direction so it should pass uh, towards port one but circulator does not allow this thing even if there are reflection of light from port to the reflected light should have to move in this direction so reflected light will move from port 2 to, to port 3 it will not pass to port 1 and this is the way how port 1 is isolated so this is the basic principle of working of the optical circulator so dear students that's it for today's session so thank you thanks a lot for watching this video next device is optical couplers as the name indicates optical coupler is a device which is used to couple optical power from one fiber optic cable to the other fiber optic cable so this is the optical coupler there is one term typical term which is called the coupling ratio it is basically a ratio of output power to the input optical power so this this term is called the coupling ratio as i mentioned this device is used to transfer some portion of optical power which is transmitting uh, through one fiber optic cable into the other fiber optic cable that is called the coupling of power and the term corresponding to this is coupling ratio but compared to the other devices like optical connector or optical splices the losses in case of optical uh, couplers are more there are two major types of optical couplers first is evanescent wave coupler we are considering two fiber optic cable ofc that is optical fi fiber cable 1 and ofc2 optical fiber cable 2 suppose ofc1 fiber optic cable 1 is the major optical cable through which the main light ray is uh, uh, propagating so this at the output of ofc1 we are getting the primary output now we want some of the optical power to transfer to get transferred from ofc1 to ofc2 so certain portion of ofc2 certain portion of other optical cable is bent in such a way that this particular portion will appear to be in parallel with certain portion of main optical cable that is ofc1 so in this portion this particular length in which these two optical cables appears to be parallel with each other is called coupling length l due to this very minimum distance or as if they are touching to each other certain amount of optical energy gets transferred from this ofc1 to ofc2 this particular field is called evanescent field and this this coupler is called evanescent wave coupler so uh, due to this coupling certain uh, optical power gets transferred from ofc1 to ofc2 and at the output of optical fiber 2 you are getting some amount of output that is the secondary output next type of coupler is twisted pair coupler as the name indicates uh, we are using two fiber optic cable which are twisted like this as shown in this diagram so this particular portion as well as this particular portion uh, will uh, are twisted and they are fused with each other due to this fusion action the core layer of one fiber optic cable acts as the cladding layer for another fiber optic cable and the optical coupling takes place that means optical power gets transferred from one uh, cable to the another cable this is called the twisted pair coupler so these are the two major types of optical couplers these optical couplers are also called 2 by 2 optical couplers